say if you have it, say amen. 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 All right. Um, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And today we're going to kind of just walk through the word, but uh, my topic or uh, my thought on this today is why we need the Holy Ghost and why we need to pray in tongues. And we need the Holy Ghost in order to pray in tongues. Okay, you may be seated. The first thing I want to say is that God gave us, um, he wants us to have the Holy Ghost. It's a gift from him. So why wouldn't we want it? I know we're looking forward to Christmas. You know, everybody want these Christmas presents. Who gonna give me this? Where's this one coming from? Can't wait to open my Christmas. Get my Christmas uh, present from under the tree. Well, this was a gift. And uh, we don't neglect those gifts, but we would neglect this one. We would overlook it. We would count it as not, uh, not needed. We count it lightly. But this is the greatest gift we could ever have because without it, we would not be caught up if we live here that long. Um, to be caught with him in the air because the spirit is the thing that's going to lift us. So we do need it. It's a, it's a spiritual lang language that God gives us. Um, uh, Acts 2 and 4 is one of the scriptures we'll look at. Thank you, Lord. Acts 2 and 4 said, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And we also look at verse 11, verse uh, Acts 4 and verse in, in Acts 11. Uh, and it's just talking about the different people that were able to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And, it, and here it says the Crates and the Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful words of uh, works of God. So we have to have the Holy Ghost. It's a part of what God would have us to have to uh, actually be able to talk to Him. You know, to ed uh, edify us. It's our spiritual language that we could talk to Him and, and, and build ourselves up in the Holy Ghost without, I mean, any interference. We have to have the Holy Ghost. Okay, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 14 and 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So when we speak it in an unknown tongue, we are speaking directly to God. Yes, yes. I mean, I can't think of no, I, I think I'm no one I could want to talk to more. <laughs> uh, you know, so when I'm speaking in an unknown hallelujah, when I'm speaking in an unknown tongue, it, I mean, it does. We're talking about in Sunday school about the refreshing. It takes you to another place. Yeah. You know, it takes you out. Well, who wouldn't want mm. this gift? It's, like, it's what I'm saying. Who wouldn't want? Yeah. I mean, we're looking forward to so many other gifts. When I graduate from college, I want a car. When I get, you know, when I, when I get, go to get this. So I want this for my birthday, the iPad. <laughs> this is the greatest gift we could have. Yeah. This is the greatest gift we could have. And um, Isaiah 28 and 11, which was one of my key verses also, um, where we, uh, we're going to turn there. Yes. Because, I mean, uh, I just, he does so much. I mean, I could just whisper his name, lose things around the house, can't find it, and have Jesus, and look over there, and there it is. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Who wouldn't want him? Who wouldn't want to serve him? And the fact that he sacrificed himself yeah. to redeem man and come back and live within us. That's, right. That's, right. That's what we forget. He is living within us. And yet we ignore him by not speaking in tongues. I mean, there's a, a, on a daily basis. Not just when you first receive the Holy Ghost and then you go months and years and don't speak again. On a daily basis, you should, well, I mean, talk to him. That's your first love, right? Yeah. 
That's your first love. That should be. Uh, I heard uh, Pastor talking the other night say, "I love my wife, but I love the Lord more than I love my wife." Well, that's who you love it when you're talking to him, when you're seeking him out every day and reading his word. You loving on him. Amen. Amen. So um, let's get to Isaiah 28 and verse 11. But with stammering lips and another tongue will I speak to my people. He's speaking to us through that unknown tongue. He is speaking to us. And yet we, we count it lightly. We can't count it lightly. We cannot um, get the Holy Ghost and not talk to him every day. Uh, take it lightly and go around and not speak for, to him for months at a time. Uh, scripture came to mind while I was studying this. I have more scriptures, but the scripture, um, let's see, didn't I? Ephesians 6 and 12. I'm I, um, kind of getting a little ahead of myself, but this just reminds me, Ephesians 6 and 12, and it says, um, it's talking about us wrestling against flesh and blood. <clears throat> but we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, uh, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness, wickedness in high places. But... We are wrestling against flesh and blood. Because if you don't have the Spirit of God, you ain't wrestling with nothing but flesh. If you don't, if you got the Spirit of God and not using it and drying up, you ain't wrestling with nothing but flesh and blood. You not I mean, if we were wrestling against principalities and powers, like it's saying, we'd be tearing the devil's kingdom down. He wouldn't be getting away with as much as he's getting away with. Not if we got a unified body. Praying in tongues, walking in the spirit, not after the flesh. If we were doing that, he wouldn't be getting away with as much as he's getting away with. So, when well, the next time we say we're wrestling not against flesh and blood, think about if you pray in the tongues today, if you talk to the Lord, have you edified yourself, have you built yourself up so he could what, be used to? He didn't come here just to sit in you and say I got the Holy Ghost and feel good about it. He didn't, he didn't do that. It's a gift. A gift. I mean, we like receiving gifts. Well, this is the best one we can receive. Okay, it, it does. It helps us manifest the fruits of the Spirit. That's in Galatians 5, 22 through 25. Okay, and it helps us recognize each other because he said, by his body of the fruits, you shall know them. Matthew 7 and 16 and 7 and 20. So, I mean, if we're going to be manifesting fruits, how are you going to manifest a fruit that you don't have? How are you going to manifest a fruit that you're not cultivating? You got to get around there even with a garden and plant. You got to dig up weeds. You got to put, you know, a pool of weeds. You got to put in fertilizer. That means you're taking care of it. So it'll grow. So speaking in tongues is one way it grows. In one way it matures you. It gives you the wisdom and knowledge and understanding uh, to walk in this world. To walk, you know, we ask for wisdom. He said he'll give it to us liberally and unabraded not. But that wisdom of God is going to come from above. And the other wisdom is earthly. So we got to have the spirit of God. We've had, we have to have the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, we have to have the Spirit of God. We can't uh, have one, uh, one and, the, and then it does, I mean, we do pray with the understanding. Don't get me wrong. You pray with the understanding, but you also pray with the Spirit. Don't have one and neglect the other. Don't go overboard just praying in tongues all the time. And don't go overboard just speaking, I mean, just praying with the understanding all the time. It's a balance. It's a balance. But I, I, I myself, ooh, I just can't think of going to two, three, four days, five days, and oh my God, y'all might not even want to be around me. <laughs> you might even want to be around me because I rely so much on the Spirit of God. I rely so much on the Spirit of God. 
And uh, let's look at this uh, scripture here. It's, uh, there are things that are only spiritually discerned. Okay. And only the spirit can discern those things. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 13. Okay, verse 3, maybe, uh, 2, 9 through 13. And this is a, well, a famous scripture, but this is where we stop. But as it, written, but as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared them that, for them that love him. But, I have to get uh, Pastor Taki to uh, elaborate on that book, because something is coming after that, right? <laughs> He's teaching that in Bible study. Okay, so if I hadn't seen, okay, and it hadn't heard, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yeah, the deep things of God. No, we had but it's been revealed. It's been revealed, but why how? Through the spirit of God. That's why so many things aren't discerned because we're walking in the flesh. That's why so many things, are, we are, I mean, we are losing battles because we're walking in the flesh. We are fighting against flesh and blood. Okay, now, uh, for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Okay, so we, only way we're going to know that is through the Spirit of God. The Spirit will reveal us, really reveal us, reveal it to us. The wisdom and knowledge and understanding that we seek after is through the Spirit. Yes. I think about um, Samson, Solomon, <laughs> one of the greatest kings ever uh, lived, and uh, I think about the two women that, uh, and the judgment that he had. Uh, that um, that killed the baby, the one killed the baby, and um, for him to have that wisdom to see through that, it's a spirit of truth that'll come on people. I have been around people, and they just start telling me truth just because the spirit of truth is in me. I be like, they walk away. I say, I bet you they don't even know why they said that. <laughs> I bet they don't even know why they told it, told all their business. No, oh, the spirit of truth it lives in you. It makes itself, I mean, it draws stuff out of people. It, it manifests itself. I mean, so, and I think about if you want wisdom, if you want knowledge, you want understanding, you got to be in the spirit. To maneuver through this uh, world, you got to be, I, uh, I hear, and, they, and he did it for me too, but I hear Pastor talking about, you know, the spirit lead him down this street and go with it. I mean, uh, to people houses and stuff that you don't know. When you intercede, and I have called out names of people that I didn't even know. And come to find out one, one of them was on my job. I was uh, working, they were working in another area. They came through one day and I was uh, a receptionist. I stopped them and uh, they said, I'm going to work. And I said, oh, well, you need to sign in. And they, I said, what's your name? And they told me the name. That was the name I called out in prayer. I didn't even know they worked there. God was trying to uh, save them from something or whatever. You know, I don't know what it was. But he did that because you have to be in tune with the spirit. I don't, you don't have time for knick-knack and pallywhack and the, the gossip, the terror bear, all this because you got to stay in a place with God. And not only, I mean, I, I, I think about uh, if I hadn't been in a place with God when my uh, young son backslid and all the things he went through. And I'm waking up 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning calling on the name of the Lord. Call him or text him and say, get out of there. He leave and call me back and say, Mama, you know when I left, such and such happened, such and such happened. You know I, that's why I ain't got time for foolishness. I have to be in a place that I could touch God. For my family, for my friends, for my saints. You, I mean, you got to be, and that's only through the Spirit. He'll give you that wisdom and knowledge. He'll give you, I mean, just like it was saying here, the things that are discerned, discerned only by Him. He wants us to know this. 
He don't want us operating like the people in the world. We don't use their wisdom to uh, to uh, work out things or understand things. And some things, you know, you have to wait. You just have to wait on God. You have to wait on God. You know, we like to jump, but you have to wait. And uh, I want to go through this scripture real quick. I know I don't have um, uh, much time left, but uh, Acts 19, please. I'm kind of skipping. Um, I got three pages of notes, so you know I knew I wouldn't. <laughs> I wasn't going to do you. I didn't know I was going to have to speak. So, I mean, this is just personal Bible study. Um, Acts 19. Okay, and uh, 1 through 6. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Until then what ye what until then, until what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Do you know, time he mentioned that and said, have you received the Holy Ghost unto, uh, uh, since you believe? And it also revealed that if you're baptized wrong, it revealed right away. He knew then, and what were you baptized? Because if you hadn't heard of the Holy Ghost, you surely ain't heard of Jesus' name, baptism. <laughs> you surely hadn't heard of Jesus' name, baptism. He said, well, then what, until what were you baptized if you hadn't heard of the Holy Ghost? Because it couldn't have been in Jesus' name because you would have heard of it. He went on to say, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hand upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Once again, you're going to speak with tongues, and many of you are going to prophesy, because it will turn you into another man or woman. I mean, an anointing comes on you, and my little grandson, he be running around the house preaching, and ay, 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 ay. Speaking in tongues, so he's saying he get his little baby wipe and wipe his face, but wipe the sweat. But his voice changes. When he, I, I say, Lord, <laughs> uh, 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 the anointing falls or something, his voice changes. He goes, he turns into an I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah, right. oh, my God. <laughs> So it turns you into an <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's good because it changes you. I mean, you go on from glory to glory, okay? But, yes, I mean, by, I mean, even when we talk to people and they don't know about the Holy Ghost, we know then sometimes that's a, 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 a hint there that they haven't been baptized right. Okay, so um, I wanted to speak about that. Uh, real quick, but I, what I can't emphasize more is that it's the direct communication with God. It's a direct communication with God. It builds us up. It edifies us. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 4, 4 and Jude, uh, I think I read 14 and 4, so let's read Jude 1 and 20. Jude 1 and 20 says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's how you're going to build yourself up. Right. And we need building up. And how you going to fight a devil you ain't built up in the Holy Ghost? And it'll stop all that murmuring and complaining. Murmuring and disputing, as the words say. Because then you learn to trust him. Knowing that he's going to bring you through him. And it helps you stay spiritual. Uh, first, first Thessalonians five seventeen. It tells us to pray without ceasing. Uh, and that's one thing. I mean, when you're praying without ceasing, uh, you're praying in the spirit. I mean, you are in prayers all day long, uh, in the spirit of in the natural. If I pass by a wreck, I'm praying. You know, I don't wait till I get home to see what the news say. Because guess what? If I pray when I see that wreck, I might not hear the bad report on the news. Because I done called on the name of Jesus 
and say, God, save them. If they're not saved, give them another chance to meet you. Then um, I might get home and say, well, there was a wreck here and uh, such and such, but they took them to the hospital and they're going to be fine and still are dead bodies. But that comes from praying. And you pray without ceasing. You pray always. There's always something to pray for. Somebody to pray for. Things to pray for. Situations, circumstances. You know, I mean, our, our families, that the world is in a mess. You know, so there's always something to pray for. As we travel listening to uh, Brother Benjamin's testimony, uh, the prayers, I mean, just prayers, just uh, keeping him. You know, Keeping him on it. I'm reading about the same things he's reading about. People pulling guns on people in parking garages. My daughter worked down there at UAB. You think I'm not going to pray? You think I'm, I'm going to be in a place where foolishness is going on? I'm hee hee and yak yakking and going on and I can't touch God? No, and she works sometime 11 o'clock at night coming out in that parking garage? No, sir. No, sir. I wake up, my hands in there. Jesus. Oh God. Let's pray. Um, uh, my, my, my thought today is just like, the, I mean, we got to watch and we got to pray. We're in an hour, we must pray. But we must pray in the spirit too. We got to pray. It's going to, I mean, he's, the, the scripture tells us, let's go to Romans 8, 27. It's going to make intercessions for us. We're going to be uh, praying with groaners that can't be uttered. I want to start at 26, actually. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we are. But the Spirit itself makes an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts know what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And so God is making intercession for us. I mean, I, oh, there is, um, I mean, it's a joy for God to just use your body to intercede for somebody. To go into that realm where you can't pray and all you do is groan. Oh, glory! All you do when you feel that thing down in here and all you could do is just, as a uh, first lady was running across here, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, just like you birthing something, you know? Yes. You got to pray. And you got to pray in the spirit. Don't let the devil continue to trick you that you can receive the Holy Ghost and that you could not pray in tongues every day. That why would you not want to talk to the God that sacrificed and died for you? In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, good. If there's anybody here today who 